Hello and welcome to Unit 10, Video 5. Today we're going to look at exponential growth and decay. Uh, your learning target for today is that you can use logarithms to solve problems involving exponential decay and growth. Okay. Certain assets, like homes, can appreciate or increase in value over time. Other things, like cars, depreciate or decrease in value with time. Okay. So let's suppose you buy a car for $22,000 and the value of the car decreases by 16% each year. It says write an exponential function of the form y equals ab to the x that could be used to model the price y of the car. Write the function in terms of x the number of years since you purchased the car. Okay. So let's write our equation. y will equal a remembers our starting value, so it started out with a value of $22,000. And this one's decreasing. So remember, if it's a decrease, you would take 1 minus the rate, so 0.16 to the x. So my equation is really y equals 22,000 and times 1 minus 0.16 is 0.84 to the x. Okay. It says, find the value of the car two years later. Okay, well, if I want to figure out two years later, x is my number of years, so I'm going to plug in two. So, for two years later, we'll have y equals 22,000 times 0.84 to the second. So, remember, this is a value of a car, so let's, let's figure this out and round to two decimal places for money. So, we have 22,000 times 0.84. 8, 4 to the second. Okay, so two years later, my the value of the car is $15,523.20. Okay, so let's write that down. All right, if I want to do it three years later, I will go ahead and plug in three. One little trick on your calculator is you don't have to retype it every time. You could just arrow up. If you have the 84, hit enter, and then just change this to a 3. So backspace, 3, enter, and the value of your car after 3 years is $13,039, and this would say 49 cents to round properly. So $13,039, yep, and 49 cents. And 7 years later, we would go ahead and plug in... Seven. Okay, if I do that, what value would I get? Seven years later, the value of the car will be six thousand four hundred ninety-one dollars and ninety-nine cents. Okay, so it doesn't take long to lose. We look at it in seven years, you will lost over ten thousand dollars. 18, let's see, yeah, quite a bit of money on your car. So yeah, the value of cars depreciates a lot and it happens quickly. So something to keep in mind is you're maybe thinking about buying a car. So those are our values seven years later. Um, so we're going to be looking at exponential growth and decay functions today. This is an example of decay, okay? So exponential decay when a quantity decreases by a fixed percent each year or over a period of time, it's given by this equation, okay? Y equals a, um, y equals a times 1 minus r to the t, okay? So let's just look at example 1. A cup of coffee contains 130 milligrams of caffeine. If caffeine is eliminated from the body at a rate of 11% per hour, how long will it take for half of this caffeine to be eliminated? All right, so... First thing I would do is we are decreasing by 11%, which is 0.11. All right. So what do I have here? We start with 130 milligrams times 1 minus 0.11 to the X. And we want to know how long will it take for half of this caffeine to be eliminated. So half the caffeine, we currently have 130, so we take it divide by 2, so it's 65. So 65 equals... 130, 1 minus 0.11 to the, let's call it t, because that's what we're trying to figure out is time. Then let's simplify. We have 65 is equal to 130. Uh, this is really 0.89 to the t. Now let's solve for t. 
We've solved problems like this before, so this first step is to divide by 130. 65 divided by 130 is 1 half, which it shouldn't be surprising because we're saying half of it. So 0.89 to the t. Now, in order to solve from here, we would have to take log on both sides. Okay, we have log of 1 half. That allows me to bring my t down in front. So I have log of 1 half equals t times log of 0.89. If I want to solve for t, I would divide both sides by log of 0.89. All right, so if I go ahead and type this in my calculator, I should figure out how, many, how much time it will take. So we have log of 0.5 divided by, make sure you end your parentheses on your first log, log of 0.89, which gives us a t at... Did I type something in wrong? Oh, I forgot to divide, didn't I? <laughs> so if you ever do something like that, you can always reselect it and you can insert things. So I'm going to go right here, maybe. Nope, back one. Second, insert, and I'm going to insert the division sign. At this point, it may have been easier just to retype it. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, I'm going to retype it. You can use the insert. Usually it works pretty well. So 0.5, end the parentheses, hit the division button, then log of 0.89, and hit enter. And you get their T is 5.948. And you should always label, my time is in hours, so I would say hours. All right. So that's example one. Let's look at example two. A store is offering a clearance sale on a certain type of digital camera. The original price for the camera was $198. Okay, so our original, which is our initial amount, okay, is $198. The price decreases by 10%, so that's our 0.1 each week until all of the cameras are sold. How many weeks will it take for the price of the cameras to drop below half of the original price? Okay, so our original price currently is 198. So to figure out half the price, we take 198 divided by two, which is 99, which is our final amount, okay? So we're gonna plug it in. So we have 99 equals 198, then one minus 0.1 to the, we don't know how much time, okay? So there's that. I would solve this. First thing I would do is maybe rewrite this. I'm just going to write it above. It's 0.9. Okay, so... Okay, I lied. I'm going to rewrite the whole thing. All right. Now, I would divide by 198. Okay, because you have to get the piece that's being raised the exponent by itself first. This gives me 1 half equals 0.98... Sorry, 0.9 to the t... Then we would take log on both sides. I have log of 1 half is equal to t log of 0.9. Then I would go ahead and divide both sides by log of 0.9. So if I type this in, I would have log of 0.5 divided by log of 0.9. And that will give me my time which is 6.759, okay, 6 point, did I say 759, or is it 57? Five, 579, five, 579, five, weeks. So how many weeks would it really take? To drop below half, I would probably say seven weeks. All right, that is example two. Let's move on to example three. Okay, example three is an example of increasing, so it's exponential growth. The biggest thing is that instead of subtracting, now you would add the rate. Okay, so in 1910, the population of a city was 120,000. So that's how much you start with, so that is your A. Since then, the population has increased by 1.5% per year. So 1.5% is really point, move it over two, zero, 
uh, 1, 5. If the population continues to grow at this rate, what will it be in 2010? Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. We would have y equals the amount we started with. Uh, then my rate, so 1 plus this, so I'm just going to write it as 1.015 to the t. Okay, now we're asked, we are given time. So t is usually the number of years later. So how many years has it been from our starting point, which is like year 0, to 2010? Okay, if you, this one's pretty easy, but if you don't know, you can take 2010 minus 1910, which is 100. So that means our time is 100. So you just go ahead and plug it in. All right, if I do that and I type it in, I have 120,000 times 1.015 to the 100. All right, now this one's talking about population. So should you have any decimals? No. Just follow rules of rounding. This is a 4, which tells us to round down. So it would be 531,845. So that's how big the city would be. All right, that is example 3. Example 4, okay, the population of another city... Um, of 1 million is increasing at a rate of 3% per year. If it continues to grow, how many years will it take for the population to double? So if we currently have 1 million, double means we have 2 million. All right, so 2 million. That is our final amount equals our 1 million times our rate of increase. 1 plus 3% is 0 0.03 to the T. We don't know. If I divide both sides by 1 million... These cancel, all these zeros cancel. 2 divided by 1 is 2 equals 1.03 to the t. To solve for t, we use our log. So I would log on both sides. So I have log of 2 equals, I bring the t down in front, t times the log of 1.03. I would divide both sides by log of 1.03. And so, t, if I go ahead and type it into my calculator, will be 23.540. And I would recommend that you try it, but if you do, that's what you'll get. And my time is in years, so label it years. All right, that is example five. Sorry, that's example four, isn't it? Example five, let's do example five. Okay, homes in Miller Sport increased about 4% per year. Mr. Thomas purchased his home eight years ago for 122,000. What is the value of his home now? So Y equals, I started with 122,000. It's increasing, so one plus 0.04, gives me 1.04, and eight years, eight. Okay, if we type it in, 122,000 times 1.04 to the eighth will give you 166, and they round it a little differently, so what's the best answer? The best answer will be C. All right, that is example five. Okay, we have some other um, models that are used. So there's exponential decay. We have y equals a times e to the negative kt, where k is a constant. So it's typically your rate that you are decreasing at. Okay. Um, this is an example that, or this is a model that they use for radioactive decay. Okay. Uh, this one is for growth. So notice decay has a negative, growth has a positive. Okay. So when it is involving e, you use the actual rate you are given, okay? So, six, the half-life of a radioactive substance is the time it takes for half of the atoms of the substance to disintegrate. All life on Earth contains carbon-14, which decays, here's our key keyword, continuously at a fixed rate, okay? Which tells me I'm going to have to use um, one of these equations. The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,760 years. 
that is every 5,760 years, half of the mass of carbon-14 decays away. What is the value of K and the equation of decay for carbon-14? All right, so what we need to do is we need to figure out the half-life. They give us no information, but that's okay. All right, so let's just say we start with our A is equal to 1. What is half of 1? Well, it's one half. So our start amount was one, and we want to figure out, well, one, there's half of it left. And then it's e to the, we don't know the rate, but I know it's decay. So I know it's a negative k times the time. How long does it take for half of it to be left? 5,760 years. All right. Well, one times anything is just what I have. So e to the, I'm going to write this as negative 5760k. And if I want to solve this, I would take natural log on both sides to get the k out of the exponent. So I have natural log of 1 half equals, this cancels, negative 5760k. If I want to solve for k, I would divide by negative 5760. So k is equal to, when I type this into my calculator, I get, better show you, natural log of 0.5 divided by negative 5760. So k is, okay, notice what it gives you, e, which really is scientific, no, scientific notation. So it is times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so k is 1.203 times 10 to the negative fourth, which if I move it, negative four means I'm gonna move it four times over here, so I'll have three decimals. So K is equal to 0.0001203. Okay, so there is K. You have a problem on your homework or on your practice sheet, and you will need this for number five on your practice sheet. So keep this in mind when you do your practice, you're going to do, need this for problem number five. All right, example seven. For a certain strain of bacteria, K is 0.872 when T is measured in days. Using the formula, Y equals, I'm just going to, whoops, Y equals A E to the KT, how long will it take nine bacteria to increase to 738 bacteria. All right, we are starting with nine bacteria and they are increasing to 738 and K is 0.872. So I will have 738 is equal to nine E to the 0.872 T. To solve, gotta get E by itself, so divide both sides by nine. 738 divided by 9 is 82 equals e to the 0.872t. Natural log on both sides. So I have natural log of 82 equals 0.872t. Then I would divide both sides by 0.872. So on my calculator, I would do natural log of 82 divided by 0.872. If I do that, I will get T is equal to 5.054 days. All right. That is the end of Unit 10, Video 5. If you have any questions, please write them down. Otherwise, have a great day, and I will talk to you later.